Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC in the Babylon world, and welcome back to this nine-part video series that we're calling the Mystery Demo Tutorial Series. This is part two of our video series. If you haven't had a chance to check out part one, please check the description down below for a link to that, as well as a link to the exact place that we left off from our first video. Here in part two, we're going to be diving deeper down the rabbit hole of waves. Specifically, we're going to be looking at a much more mathematically complex but realistic looking type of wave known as the Gerstner wave. Now, the Gerstner wave is named after the German born physicist and engineer Franz Josef von Gerstner, who first discovered this mathematical model. And the main difference between a Gerstner wave and the simple sine wave that we created in the first video is that. In the sine wave, we're simply taking the any individual vertex and moving it up and down vertically uh, based on a mathematical equation. In a Gerstner wave, we actually account for horizontal movement of any given vertex in addition to the vertical movement. So as a wave uh, crest goes by, it might take uh, any given vertex of a mesh along with it uh, in, in a horizontal direction. And so the Gerstner mathematical formula, though complex, actually equates for that. And so we're going to be diving right in and creating a Gerstner wave here in the Node Material Editor. So let's dive right in. Uh, rem if you'll remember from the first video, we started with the NVIDIA GPU Gems article called Effective Water Simulation from Physical Models. This is a fantastic article, and the entire GPU Gems series is an amazing series to learn about the GPU. Uh, but today what we're going to do is we're going to scroll right on down past where we were in the first video, which is the sum of sines approximation. Uh, and then we're going to keep going past a whole bunch of stuff until we get to Gerstner waves. Now specifically what we're going to be doing in this video is creating equation number nine in the node material editor. Now I know that that probably looks pretty intimidating, but just like we did in the first video, we'll break it down, go through each individual part and create an awesome, more realistic looking wave. So let's start where we left off in the node material from last time. This was our very simple sine wave that was influenced by uh, a speed variable, a, a wavelength, that we could change, a variable that we could change, a wind direction variable, and an amplitude. So the length of the waves between each wave, uh, the height of the waves, the speed, and then of course the direction that it's traveling. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dissecting that super intimidating looking equation. But I've got some good news. We're actually reusing a lot of what we've done from the first video. In fact, this entire bottom part of the equation here, which is the vertical movement for any given vertex, that actually is a direct copy of what we did for the first one. So we literally can now just add on top of what we've already done. Why the Y movement is already taken care of. And remember, as a reminder, in the Babylon world, we have a Y up world. In the NVIDIA world, mathematically, they're assuming a Z up world. So anytime you see Y, in uh, the NVIDIA world, we have to translate that to Z for us. So there's a little bit of translation we have to do for the Babylon world. Uh, okay, so we've already done all of this here, which is fantastic. And I have better news for you, which is that everything that's inside of the cosine parentheses here for both the X and the Z value this bit is actually the exact same as what's inside the parentheses here. So what we're taking for this, uh, the calculating from the sine and cosine of this equation is the same as what's in this equation. So we already have that as well. So effectively, we've already done a whole bunch of this. In fact, let's go look at it. Everything that happens before the sine being multiplied by the amplitude, this is all stuff that we get to reuse in every, any, all three of these equations. In fact, what we can do is we can bring in a cosine and even reuse that between the x and the z coordinates. So let's start there by bringing in a cosine. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the, everything that's before that, which again is the same thing that's in the parentheses, and we're going to put that right into the cosine. Now, I am going to tell you that we're going to need a lot more room because Gerstner waves are a bit more complicated. 
they're a lot more complicated. So I'm going to start by just taking our uh, frames here and moving those over. And then I'm going to uh, hold down control and then uh, click and drag across these nodes. And then we'll drag those over as well, just to give us some more room. Okay, so now what we have effectively built in the node material editor is this bottom equation. We also have the cosine of this formula and this here. So now effectively all we need to do is calculate out this Q times A times D dot X uh, times the cosine. And don't worry, we'll go over all of it. In fact, let's start with uh, working backwards here. We'll start with X. And what we want to do is we say, now that we have the cosine of this, we want to multiply that by the X value of the wind direction, okay? So remember that we have the wind direction and we want to get to just the X value. So we're going to take a vector splitter, okay? And we're going to say, I want you to come into x, y. Now remember, we're using x and y values to mean x and z for us, okay? So now we have access to both x and in this case, the z value. And we are going to multiply that by the output of this cosine node. So we'll take x and we'll move that over here and we'll take this cosine and move it here. And then what we're going to do is just move that down for a little bit more organization, uh, right about there. Okay, so we now should do the same thing for Z. So let's copy and paste this node. Now it's going to preserve the connections. So we can actually kill off this one because that's connected to X and we want to connect it to Z. And again, just to emphasize this, in this case, we're taking the Z value, which for us is being piped through this Y uh, output here. So we're going to take that in to this multiply node. Okay, great. So now what do we have? We have the cosine of this for both X and Z multiplied by the X and Z coordinates of the wind direction or value, excuse me, of the wind direction. Now we need to multiply those by this here. And we need to first understand, we know what A is, A is amplitude. But now we need to understand what Q is. And it's basically a factor for figuring out the steepness of the wave or how much should we move the uh, any given vertex in X and Z? How much should we move it horizontally? There's a kind of a factor. Uh, and that creates kind of a steepness effect, which you can see depicted uh, up here in the, in the picture above. So if we read a little further, we can see that effectively what Q me uh, is, is a value, in this case one, divided by W multiplied by the amplitude. So let's start by creating Q, okay? So we're gonna say we know it's uh, W multiplied by the amplitude. So let's start with that. So we're gonna bring out, uh, we'll put it down here, we're gonna bring out another multiply node, okay? We already have the amplitude. In fact, amplitude, I'm just gonna move over here uh, and I'll move wind direction over here as well. So all of our kind of parameters are sort of old over in this section. And let's take the amplitude and multiply that by W, the output of W, which is here. So now we have uh, W times A and we need to put a variable. This is something that we're going to be able to control. And we're going to say, I want you to be divided by the uh, W times amplitude, uh, wavelength times amplitude. Okay, so now that we have this connected, I wanna talk a little bit about this. This is going to be our steepness. Okay, we're just gonna call this steepness. Now, most of the time in Gerstner waves, we're not gonna go into a ton of detail about why this exists. Uh, you do not wanna have a value above one. Effectively, what happens is one means I want a perfect flat crest and anything past one means you're gonna to start to get kind of a wonky, uh, non-realistic looking wave, okay? It's where the wave basically sort of breaks the mind. It, it technically works mathematically, but it doesn't obviously mimic uh, real world water. So what I'm gonna do here is I have a min and max value for the steepness node. I'm gonna keep the min at zero, but I'm going to put the max at one. 
And now I'm presented with a slider uh, that we'll use in the future uh, to be able to kind of slide to see how steep we want our waves to be. Okay, now this effectively now is Q. So we have a value uh, over uh, wavelength times amplitude. So I want to just for the sake of organization, I want to again hold shift down on the keyboard and then click and drag until I'm presented with a frame and I want to label this to be Q, just so that we're keeping ourselves nice and organized. Okay, so now what we have is Q. And of course, what we need to do then is multiply it by the amplitude. We'll multiply this by the amplitude, start at the amplitude. Kind of hard to see here when we're getting super small, but that worked. And then we'll zoom in and say, just like that. And now I'm going to move this up here because effectively what we have is we have the wind direction value for X and Z multiplied by the cosine of our normal sine wave equation. And then we wanna multiply that by what we just created. So those two are multiplied together. So we need another two multiply nodes, one for X and one for uh, Z. So what I'm going to do at this point, just to keep it super organized, is I'm going to now organize it in terms of X, Y. This is where Y is being piped all the way into the vertex shader. So this is going to be X, uh, uh, X, Y, and then this will be Z. So effectively, what we'll do now is we will take the X value here, put that into there. We're going to multiply that by the... Uh, output of this node, which is uh, Q times A. And then we're gonna do the same thing for this one. So this is gonna be Z multiplied by Q times A. So now what we have is we have everything that's in this equation for X and for Z. Not too complicated, right? We were able to break that down. That's awesome. It looks intimidating, but once you get into it, it's actually pretty easy to figure out. We're not quite done yet though for X and Z, and here's why. We have, in this node, we have the original position for X, Z, and W being passed right across to the, um, uh, to the vertex uh, merger node, the excuse me, the vector merger node. And then that vector four is being piped into the um, uh, vertex output. So what we wanna do now is this final step here is we need to take the result for both X and Z and we need to add the original position of both X and Z, okay? Uh, respectively for each equation. So what I want to do is I wanna add in two more add nodes. Now, specifically to just make this a little easier on ourselves, I actually wanna add them over, uh, add them to the scene over here. And the reason for this is I'm gonna hook up the original X position here and the original Z position here. And then I'm going to take those two nodes. I'm gonna hold down control so I can uh, click and drag to multi-select them. I'm gonna bring these over here. And again, I'm trying to think in terms of this is X, this is Z, and then this is Y. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this multiply here, which is everything in the equation for X. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing for Z. Boom, got that. And now what we have, we'll move this out. These are the final positions for X, Y, and Z for any given vertex to be able to create a Gerstner wave. You don't believe me? Okay, well, let's prove it. Let's hook it on up. We can go take the X value, pipe that right into X. Y is already hooked up for us from our first video. And then we can take Z, connect that right to Z. And as soon as we do this, Boom, Gerstner wave. It looks no different, right? Well, that's because our steepness factor is set to zero, which basically means we just want a rolling sine wave. But what hap watch what happens when I actually slide this value higher. I'm actually getting a steeper and steeper and steeper node until you start to get, you can spe specifically see it in the corner there, a much more realistic looking model of waves, where all of the values, the three coordinates, X, Y, and Z, are all being driven for any given vertex. 
This is super, super exciting stuff here. It's a Gerstner wave. That's a pretty complicated mathematical formula, but we dissected it together here in our nine part video series. Remember this is part two, lots more to come. Hope you've enjoyed this video and it was easy enough to follow along. If you haven't already done so, we hope you consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any more videos and we will see you next time.